So who would have guessed it? All this time the Doctor was an alien refugee founded by a female scientist who amongst the many other unnumbered regenerations once spent an entire lifetime as a ginger Irish policeman. And I'm sure no one in the Doctor Who fandom will have any problems with that whatsoever. Oh, by the way, I was being sarcastic. Well, duh. I think it's more than necessary to bring up the fact, more than any other fictional character out there and in turn their fictional history, that for anyone who's ever worked on Doctor Who, being those both past and present, has pretty much been going on the same unwritten mantra of I don't know, I'm making this up as I go. Having said that, I don't want this video to come off as some sort of self-righteous excuse for not discussing the many different aspects this now raises for the show's legacy and future. I mean, it didn't bother me, but I know a lot of folks out there for which it did. And likewise, if you didn't care for the last two episodes or felt it was a disappointment to the rest of the preceding series, then yeah, that's all fair and valid. Unfortunately, like so many things, once that conversation heads online, it tends to be dominated by those who tend to shout the loudest and the angriest. And to be honest, my first thought after watching The Timeless Children was, is this all gonna go down like The Last Jedi did, where fans are all gonna be like, no! I will destroy anyone who tries to take my baby! And thus, therefore, now I'm entitled to act like a complete and utter dick to anyone even remotely involved in said changing made up thing. It just seems unbelievably petty to me. Look, I know there's more pressing things going on around the world at the moment, and seeing how most of us are staying inside trying not to go stir crazy over that, but this whole thing has gotten me thinking about the last time that another major shake up to Doctor Who's origin was also called into question, both on and off screen. The Doctor is heavy. Side. See, back in the mid 90s, the original setup for what became the 1996 TV movie was for then potential showrunner Philip Siegel rather ambitious attempt to relaunch the show as a collaboration with American investor Amblin Entertainment by having an elaborately made pitch bible detailing the show's various ideas for future stories and characters, along with a full backstory for the Doctor, where he was the son of a time lord father and a human mother, along with a surprising lineage to the Master. And what is he to you, like a colleague or? Friend or part. I thought you were going to say he was your secret brother or something. <laughs> You've been watching too much TV. Incidentally, this was also the same material given to Paul McGann for his screen test for the role. So, why was the backstory changed? Well, the primary reason behind this was for the show to have an ongoing seasonal arc for the Doctor, to search for his missing father whilst he was travelling around the universe. Unfortunately for Siegel, this plan was rejected by Spielberg along with the opening story involving a journey to World War II London, feeling that the company's script read too much like something out of Indiana Jones. Eventually, the project was picked up by both Universal and Fox's own TV movie department, with the deal being that the TV movie would act as a pilot for a potential full-going American-produced series. However, despite working from an entirely new premise about the Doctor regaining his memories, the half-human concept was still left in. And the funny thing is, it doesn't amount to anything in said story. What? No, really, I've already played in the two scenes for you. Once as a surprising reveal, then later as a gag, before it's promptly forgotten about towards the end. And yet, this new revelation struck such a nerve to longtime fans that, to them, it seemed like the most unthinkable that you could ever do in bringing the series back to the screen. I mean, they didn't care for the kissing scenes either, but I think most of them have gotten less annoyed about that over time, though I can't imagine why. Oh, by the way, I was being tired. Yes, I know! <laughs> In any case, for the time, all of the subsequent books, tie novels, and audio dramas on the Eighth Doctor tried to either scud around the whole idea or retcon it out completely. And come the series 2005 revival, it's never been brought up again. I like your human. Oh, that's disgusting. Oi! Oi! Stop it! No, wait. I'm Part-time Lord, part-human. Well, isn't that wizard? So, yeah, that's how it all went down. To be honest, my take of the whole thing comes off more as a quaint oddity in Who's history. In terms of making the Doctor one half alien and one half human, it kind of makes it more like they were trying to take the origins of Mr. Spock and trying to implement it into what was already a unique character in their own right. 
And again, a very similar point has been brought up when discussing the events of Ascension of the Cybermen and the Timeless Children, that the new twist hasn't added that much else to Jodie's character or to said two-part story. Still, the likelihood this will all pay off for the remainder of Chitnall's run of the show is more than likely to happen, and whether or not they'll end up having to backtrack this whole idea halfway through by having to imply it was all the Master's doing, or messing with the Doctor's head, or the Matrix, or something else, I don't know. But what I do know is, while it's hard to estimate what the outcome of this whole thing will be in the end, all I can say for the moment is, well, time will tell. Oh, and uh, one other thing, trying to act this version of the Daleks didn't happen in the first place. Yeah, I still haven't gotten over that. Yeah, I like the paradigm look. What about it? Those words are blasphemy! Anyway, thank you for sticking around for one of my ramblings. 